This right here is the brand new EG4 Life Power 4 V2 battery. And this is the second generation of the Life Power 4 battery. And on this episode, I want to talk to you about how to get this battery connected to a Victron system and how to get this battery connected in parallel with other EG4 batteries in your Victron system. But I do want to be clear, this is not going to be a review on this battery. It's just a matter of how to use this battery with your Victron systems. Because we have a Multi Plus 2, you probably can't see it right here. We have a Servo GX, but we're going to get battery communications connected such that the EG4 battery and batteries show up in your Victron monitoring, VRM portal, whatever you want to talk about it. So let's get to it. This right here is the Servo GX and this right here is a EG4 indoor wall mount 280 amp hour 48 volt battery and this is a multi plus 48 volt uh, 3000 VA system and there is a previous episode on the channel that talks about how to get this battery communicating with your Servo GX and your multi plus so uh, we're not going to go over into that but now we're going to first start with getting this uh, new v2 battery connected to this system okay and in order to show you that it actually does work we have it connected here are the uh, system devices in this system or devices in this system and right here is the eg4 battery right the ll battery so if you go into the battery you can go into details and then see that there are now two battery modules online. Two being, one is the indoor uh, wall mount battery and the second one is the uh, Life Power 4 V2 battery. And now you can actually go in here and see that the available capacity is 380 amp hour because you know the indoor wall mount battery is 280 amp hour and this Life Power 4 uh, V2 battery is 100 amp hours. So if you combine the two, you have 180 amp hours. So therefore you go back to your system here and you can see that you have the battery connected here and it's really two modules because they're chained uh, in a way using uh, battery communications together. And you can go into parameters and kind of see uh, the discharge current is now 300, right? Uh, 300 uh, amps right because 200 comes from the wall mount battery and the 100 comes from the life pot 4v2 battery but for some reason the charge current is still limited to about 100 it should be higher than that and we'll see if we can either maybe contact eg4 or something about that uh, but you know if you ca in case you did need to override it or something you probably could do that but the point is we can show you that the battery communications for the two batteries inside of this system does indeed work okay so you can see here battery right now or power is now flowing out of this battery into loads so it's interesting because it doesn't look like a lot's flowing out but we barely have a super small load connected which is just a air purifier so i'm not going to worry about that because i know it was working previously before so now let's get into how do we get that working right so without going into the original setup of this battery communications uh there's a video like i said check on that but what we are going to do is now have this battery here which is now connected uh using these uh cables right these two odd cables into the bus bar system here that's how you would really connect that but let's, now let's talk about the can or the uh, battery communications so this indoor battery is connected using can bus to the servo gx then we're going to use the com port right here comes out of the comms port and then we're going to use a standard cat 5e uh, ethernet cable you could use cat 6 you could use whatever you wanted as long as it's at least cat 5 a standard pin out and we're going to go and connect it to right here, the battery comm port here. You can use the left side or the right side. I just happen to use the left side, mainly because my logic usually is if it's going out to the next battery, I usually come out of here. And if it's going into the battery, it uses this one, right? So uh, it's using this white Ethernet cable connected to this battery comm port. And that's all you really need to do, right? Uh, the super critical thing here is that your host battery always needs to be uh, address one so you can see here this number one is down two three four five and six is up on my second battery here the host battery or this battery is set to host address uh, number two pin down which is host address number two 
right? This uh, protocol here isn't as important because this protocol really applies to CAN bus and RS-285, but this pin out address or the uh, ID address is what's really critical here. So the, this is two down, everything else is here is up. Have it connected using standard RJ45 CAT5 cable to here, right? And then you see that it's working here. So let's see what happens if I go and disconnect this one. So let's disconnect that here. And let's go take a look at this, see if it's updated. If I go to device, it'll go ahead and say, there's that device. Let's go back to settings here, uh, parameters, 200, right? Now that the other battery is disconnected and then 100, right? Let's go into details. If you go into details, now there's only one battery module online. The other one is, you know, technically it's connected, it's just offline, uh, but we have actually physically disconnected the ethernet cable. So it's really saying, you know, there's only one recognized capacity and the install capacity is 280 amp hours, as we expect, right? So like I said, the communications does work. It's not perfect because you would imagine the charge parameters to be different or showing up perfectly, but that doesn't seem to be perfect. Like I said, we'll see if we can make a EG4 contact support ticket. I'm sure they're probably aware of this bug, hopefully. Uh, but that's how you would really get these two systems or this battery connected to this indoor wall mount battery, right? So we can go ahead and just connect this back here just for sake so we can get that going. But it is really nice to be able to use this battery and this battery together, mainly because you can see this battery is, uh, you know, electrically is connected to the bus bars inside of here, right? So even if I turn this battery off, the inverter will still be on because the bus bars here are not connected to the circuit breaker here. So it's a pro and a con depending on which way, whatever way you want to look at it, but because the bus bars are built into the battery, you do not have to buy a separate bus bar system. All right, so now let's see about getting the Servo GX and this Victron system connected to only the LifePower 4 V2 without this uh, EG4 wall mount battery. And it's going to be pretty standard. It's going to be exactly the same instructions as we did, but I know a lot of people will probably have questions about this, so let's go ahead and do that, all right? So first thing that we are going to do here is we are going to kill the power, right, to this battery. We're going to turn off the power there. Um, that way we can remove this here, right? And remove this also down here. Then we will go ahead, as it says, uh, the battery is no longer detected. Remove to connect the, uh, press to remove the disconnected devices. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. Then we are going to remove this cable here, right? Which was the original cable that was connected to this battery. All right, uh, before I did that, I guess what I should have did was change the battery parameters. So let's go ahead and turn this back on. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the switch, turn it back on. I forgot to change the uh, power or the dip switch settings on the Life Power 4 battery. So I wanna go ahead and do that. Uh, technically I could do it with it all off, but I didn't want the inverter to have to go through a you know shutdown and turn on type system. So let's go ahead now and then change this to be protocol Victron, which is you got pin number one up, two and three down, everything else up. I'm gonna change the uh, port on this one to be, or the battery identifier to be one by doing uh, dip switch number one down, all the other ones up, right? Uh, this doesn't take effect until you restart the battery or, or power cycle the battery. So let's go ahead and do that. Turn that off. Turn the red switch off, it will power cycle. As you can see here, because this battery is connected, the inverter is still on, right? Uh, if you're gonna do any of this, you really should just power, turn off the whole thing, disconnect everything. But you know, this is one of those things where it says, do as we say, not as we do. But we are showing you pretty much it can be done, okay? It's not entirely too dangerous. But what we will do here, now we'll flip the switch to this on, and then we'll go ahead and flip the, uh, switch to this back on. We'll go ahead and grab this custom cable that we made in a previous video. Uh, if you don't know how to make this, go check out the previous video, but we will go ahead and plug it into CAN bus here, right? Then we will take the other side of this cable, which we labeled for servo, and we are going to connect it to the servo GX right here, right? So now we have the servo GX connected to 
this Life Power 4 V2 battery, and now you will see it shows up as an EG4LL battery, mainly because it's using the same uh, BMS uh, system going on in there. So it shows up here. You can go in here and click on it, and you will go ahead and see details about this battery. There's one battery module. It's online, right? The installed capacity is 100 amp hours. You could technically go back, go back into this battery. You can see uh, parameters. It is set to 100 a discharge, but the charge current is limited to five amps. And this is the same thing I was mentioning earlier. For whatever reason, uh, the firmware that this one shipped with um, does that. So we may have to contact EG4 support to figure out you know, how to deal with that. Maybe they can release a bug fix and we can flash a new firmware that will potentially fix that. But the point is everything else does work. It recognizes the battery, the details are there, how much is going on and up. You can check pretty much the voltage the battery health, uh, you can you know check other details in here like lowest cell voltage and all this kind of stuff. So the communications working is really nice mainly because you can see everything flows and works perfectly using this system. All right, so that's how you would integrate a EG4 Life Power 4 V2 battery into a Victron based system. And as I mentioned earlier, this is not meant to be a review of the EG4 Life Power 4 V2 battery. There'll be another video uh, dedicated to that. But for people who wanted to use the Life Power 4 V2 battery with a Victron based system, which I'm sure there's a lot of people that want to do that, that's how you would get BMS communications working. Hopefully, EG4 will respond to our uh, support case or whatever about uh, getting the parameters corrected for the charge parameters on that. But other than that, it's you know almost like perfect, right? Because communications work. It transfers uh, the parameters and stuff like that, even though one is not correct. Uh, but you know, now you can have even more of these batteries connected. You can have the Life Power 4 batteries connected with the indoor wall mount batteries. You can have the Life Power 4 V2 batteries connected with the Power Pro batteries. And you can also have the Life Power 4 uh, V2 batteries connected with the EG4. LL batteries. Now that they've upgraded, you know, parts of the Life Power 4, and there's a lot to talk about, we're not going to get into detail, but also there's a separate switch, there's two terminals, but most importantly of all, the BMS is very much the same. It's similar, if not the same, uh, between all the EG4 uh, big battery products like this. Big battery is a different brand, that's not what I'm talking about. The batteries like the Life Power 4, LL, Wall Mount, and Power Pro, you can pretty much get them all connected and uh, communicating together. Now that's huge because uh, you buy any uh, EG4 battery off the shelf right now, you can have it communicate with current uh, Life Power 4 uh, EG4 batteries. You can also get the Life Power 4 V2 Connect communicating with the uh, V1 batteries. I'm going to figure out how to do that and we'll get a video on that. But like I said, this is huge and that's how you would integrate this battery into your Victron system. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, have a great day. Get back to work and we'll see you guys next time.